So here's something I haven't done in a while, and that is a book review. Stay tuned, it's got some positive feedback. Hey everybody, welcome back. I am here to do a full-length review of Everland by Wendy Spinelli. Everland is a Peter Pan retelling, and it is Finally, a Peter Pan retelling that I 100% enjoyed. London has been blitzed by bombs and disease and only the children now survive. Among those are Gwen Darling and her sister and brother, Joanna and Mikey. They spend nights scavenging for food and necessities and their days avoiding the marauders, the German army, led by Captain Hans Otto Oswald Kirchner, Captain Hook. I finally found a Peter Pan retelling that I liked. I have tried a couple, I haven't really even gotten past one or two chapters of two of them, and Peter Pan always ends up to be some psychotic pirate killer, I mean psycho, or there's some weird, dark, twisted thing in the book series. And the last one I read was kind of like a Benadryl intrused dream that I would have when I would take Benadryl for my allergies, of a Peter Pan retelling, and I just didn't enjoy it. So I tentatively picked up Everland because I seen a lot of people had it boxed it. I think it was in Al Crate or one of those monthly subscriptions a couple months back and I was interested in it and I saw the book trailer was really good and it was steampunk elements with a historical twist I believe. So I picked it up hoping that this one wouldn't disappoint like the others did and it didn't. So in this world, you do have the German army invading London and they blitz and bomb it to pieces. But while they're blitzing and bombing, they release a deadly virus that kills all of the adults except for some of the children. The children are more immune to it than the adults and don't die off as fast as the adults do. Gwen spends her days and nights scavenging to keep her brother and sister alive until one night she comes back and her sister has been taken by Hook and the Marauders. She then teams up with a young man named Pete and a sharpshooting sidekick named Bella. Gwen decides to put her trust in Pete and the boys of the Lost City and the sharpshooter Bella to try and save her sister's life. This ends up being a whirlwind of the adventure and I just love how the original Peter Pan story was interwoven in a steampunk alternate history fantasy world type setting. The characters were all really well written and all of your characters from the original Peter Pan story were interwoven in there and they were done extremely creatively. The names were creatively done. Bella, Pete, Joanna, Mikey, Captain Hook's name is actually an acronym of his full name. So I really like how all of that was incorporated. I loved how each of the Lost Boys didn't use their like real life names. They had their own kind of code names for the gifts or the abilities that they have. So there was a kid named Gabs because he talks too much. So I just loved how that was all incorporated just the same way the Lost Boys would have names that kind of described them rather than named them. There's also a lot of surprises in this story. It didn't just follow the basic Peter Pan storyline. You had that grand adventure through Everland. You had a purpose throughout the book to save Joanna and it kind of grew into this bigger purpose but didn't lose sight of the main purpose. So I kept the main base storyline but kind of expanded off of there and it was just really well done. There was even moments in the book where I kind of forgot about some of the original Peter Pan characters and the author surprised me of how they wove those characters into the story. There was one that I completely forgot about and there was like a moment where you think all is lost and this character comes in. It was just a really good surprise and it was really well done. I said well done a lot. It was it was a good book. It was a well done book. I loved the character development of these kids and it was kind of hard to place ages unless they actually said. So I think one was about 15. Peter is sitting at about 17, 18. Some of the older kids are also sitting at about that 16 to 18 range and and then you got the younger kids. Bella and Joanna are both sitting at about 12 or 10 and then Mikey I think he's about 5. I'm not too sure how old her younger brother was. So it was kind of hard to place ages unless it was actually said but because these kids are on their own scavenging for themselves having to take care of younger siblings, take care of orphan boss boys, you kind of get these adult moments of these kids but then you get the teenage confusion, the still trying to be an adult, still trying to be a child moments, or just 
where you are reminded that these are actually children. So it was a good balance of that and it was a good realization kind of brought into the storyline and it didn't confuse anything and it was just really well developed throughout the story. Pete and Gwen's relationship was kind of confusing at some points because you had that adult, young adult battle that was going inside of both of them. So their relationship did get a little confusing at times, but it was another well-developed relationship that I really liked. Hook and his sidekick Smeeth and his marauders were also really well done. Hook was a very confusing and conflicting character. I could not pinpoint Hook's age. I know the adults all die off, but I couldn't actually pinpoint if Hook was an adult or was kind of a young adult kind of hitting in his 20s. I just couldn't figure out Hook's age because there's moments where you think he's actually quite young and a lot closer to Pete's age than he is to the older gentleman you think about in the Peter Pan story. So Hook was a confusing character to figure out and just confusing development and you just couldn't figure out his backstory. Like it was just so overdone. It didn't bring anything to him but it didn't solve anything about him either so I couldn't figure Hook out. He's still a really well done villain, just a confusing one. Along with Hook's character being confusing, the world building was a little confusing for me because I couldn't actually pinpoint the historical setting. So they do say that Hook is leading the German army and it was the German queen though that sent them to destroy London. So it kind of makes you think of a retelling of World War II or a kind of alternate World War II. So I think it's about hitting a World War II setting, but it's also a lot of steampunk elements to it, which kind of steampunk you kind of also think a lot more Victorian is where a lot of steampunk story goes. So when I heard steampunk, my mind went Victorian, but when I heard German army and London bombing, I went to World War II. So it was a really confusing to try and pinpoint a world in my mind. But overall it just could have been a fantastical London setting and you kind of could make it whatever you wanted in within that time period, within that steampunk historical setting. So you could really do whatever you wanted with that world and it would still work with the storyline and your imagination. The ending was wrapped up really well. Not everything was wrapped up super perfectly. You did know that it wasn't over for our characters, that the story and the adventure does continue for the characters but it left you satisfied for being a standalone. You didn't desire another book. I mean, if she would write another book, I would read another book, but I didn't desire another book to finish off the story because it felt incomplete. It felt completed, satisfied, and finished. As for content rating, I would guarantee this a clean book. There was a couple moments, especially describing death and the death and carnage in general and some of the death in the book that was a little ugh, that just kind of made your stomach turn that was a little too much or too much info but it wasn't anything that made me just you know ugh, that's that's too much so i would think it's still a really good clean content if you don't like a lot of violence or blood i'd put it maybe to the mild content rating but i wouldn't put it any higher than a mild or a clean just i really overall enjoyed it there was nothing that stuck out to me that made me dislike it for any reason. But for content purposes, guaranteed a clean read. So if you're looking for a Peter Pan retelling that will not disappoint, I highly recommend Everland by Wendy Spinelli. I gave it a 4.5 star rating on Gerd Reads. I probably would have given it a 5 star rating, but I feel like I've been throwing those out lately. And there was just those confusing moments with the world building and Hook's character that eh, kind of made it just a 4.5 for me. But like I said, those are the only faults I could find with this book series. So if you're looking for a good Peter Pan retelling, go pick this one up. That's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!